Uh, we're going to begin this hour with the latest drama for Boeing's troubled, and that is the word for it, Starliner spacecraft. It is set to return to Earth tonight from the International Space Station, but it will fly home with no passengers aboard because of NASA's concerns about the ship's overall safety. Weather permitting, Starliner is going to touch down in New Mexico just after midnight Eastern time. Mark Strassman reports now on this multi-billion dollar program that put two astronauts into space but will not be trusted to bring them home. One, ignition, and liftoff of Starliner at Atlas V. Starliner's saga is almost over. Three months after helium leaks and engine problems paralyzed the first crewed flight test of Boeing's new spaceship. Of course, it's bittersweet to be packing up Starliner and putting our simulators in our seats, but um, you know, we want to do the best we can to make sure she's in good shape. We want her to have a nice soft landing in the desert. NASA decided Starliner will return to Earth without its crew, despite Boeing's confidence in the ship's safety. We view the data and the uncertainty that's there differently than Boeing does. Starliner's engines are housed in four insulated compartments around its service module. NASA believes when those thrusters fire too rapidly and spend time pointed at the sun, the compartments can get too hot, causing some engines to overheat and lose thrust. We just don't know how much we can use the thrusters on the way back home before we encounter a problem. Flight controllers will remotely command Starliner's undocking with fewer thruster firings. Starliner, flying autonomously, must perform the critical braking burn on the return to Earth, then separate from its service module and re-enter the Earth's atmosphere for a touchdown under parachutes. That will mark the end of Starliner's mission. But its crew, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, has another five Super months to go. To I certainly think they have the uh, tougher challenge than I did. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio Good can morning, relate. Frank. In 2022, his Russian Soyuz ship sprung a leak while docked to the ISS, turning a planned six-month mission into a record 371-day odyssey. I think going from six months to 12 months is tough, but it's not as uh, tough as going from eight days to eight months. Have you talked to Sonny and, uh, and Butch about it, have you given them any advice? Uh, yes, we have uh, spoken. They're doing great. Certainly there's a little part of you that's disappointed. It's okay to acknowledge that. But you also can't mope around uh, for the entire time, right? You just have to kind of dedicate and rededicate yourself to the mission. Wilmore and Williams will return on a SpaceX capsule in February. Starliner's future is less certain. For CBS Mornings, I'm Mark Strassman. So they're safe, they're good, and that, yeah. that's the good that's news, right? And they're thing, yeah. emphasizing the safety. But uh, Mark Kelly, Senator Kelly, astronaut Kelly, who was with us yesterday, told Stephen Colbert last night that one of the one of the issues here is they only have clothes for eight days, and you can't do laundry on the space station, and you can't crack a window yeah, to get the like, air out. So, yeah. so what's the odor, it like up there? The odor in there and the itchiness. You might be wearing someone else's clothes from a prior mission. Yeah. Flipping those drawers inside out. <laughs> back, <laughs> do and forth, do. back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Either way, uh. it's not but comfortable. Imagine when it lands, if it lands safely, and we all hope it does, is yeah. there a part of you that goes, oh, God, I'm I wish sure there is. No. Yeah, not worth the risk. Not yeah. worth the risk.